I just finished my first project using the Graco Project Painter Plus. This is my first time using an airless spray paint machine and I hit some snags, I watched a lot of tutorials. I'm gonna give you all the information for a basic quick start and then also include at the end of the video all the troubleshooting that I needed to go through tediously in order to fix some problems that I encountered. a little abusive with the machine in that in order to do this room I needed to prime with an enamel based primer which is contentious whether you should send that through an airless sprayer like this on the internet there's varying opinions I decided to go for it because I had no other choice I needed to prime well I could have done it by hand but I needed to prime this stained wood with an enamel based primer because nothing else will keep the stains from seeping through. So I sent a natty primer through it and then paint. And um, there were some issues, but it turned out fine. And I will uh, walk you through those learnings as well as just the basics on how to get started. If you haven't used it before or you're hitting some snags, I hope some of these tips will be helpful. And then I'm gonna start painting some cabinets so you can see how it works. You're going to need two five gallon buckets. One is for wastewater. I try to keep that consistent. That's the gray one for me. And it gets really gunked up with paint and I just don't want to have to always clean it out really well. So that's the waste one from now on. One is going to be your clean bucket. This one's relatively clean. You're going to fill the clean bucket and empty into the waste bucket always. The machine basically has two modes. One is priming, which is kind of getting the system pressure built up and clearing it all out, flushing it out. That's where you're gonna um, do your unclogging of the nozzle, clearing your paint hoses before and after use. Um, all the cleanup is in the prime mode. And the only time you're in the paint mode is when you're actually spraying the paint onto walls and things. So prime mode is lever up, this side lever. Paint mode is lever down and it's just kind of loosely down, straight down. And then the on off button is here. And then to make adjustments while you're painting, you use this knob for increasing the pressure, uh, but you do all your priming in the start mode. To get going, fill your clean water bucket. And then these are our two um, tubes. This is the intake tube, the suction tube, and this is the waste tube. So, um, put this here, I'll put this here, and we'll fill our bucket up. And I'll show you how to prime it. So to turn the machine on, you just click it. We want to go to prime. So as long as the water is running clear through this waste line, um, we're good to go on that. And then we can check that the paint sprayer is working properly. So there's a little symbol on here, one has a little spray, and then the other direction is unclog. So to, to spray, you just turn, swivel it to spray, and to unclog for these kind of priming moments, you just have it pointed in that direction. The other thing I didn't realize and hadn't seen in any of the instructions was that this nozzle pivots. You can see in the tip that there's like a little eye so if, if it's this way, it's gonna spray a vertical spray. So if, you're, if you like to go side to side in your spray motion, you'll have it in this direction. If you want it to shoot horizontal line and you wanna spray vertically like this, you'll have it in this direction. I'm here in unclog mode and I'm gonna turn it back on and make sure this is spraying properly. Despite the fact that I cleaned it really well last night, it does seem to have a little bit of a clog. What I've found works here is swiveling it and spraying in spray mode, and then swiveling it back and just sort of toggling back and forth while I'm in the prime setting, just to get the water running through really well.
great. I'm happy with that. So here's my paint. I'm using um, another kind of unconventional paint because I'm going to paint some metal cabinets. This is Command. I have never used it before, but I will let you know how it goes. I um, love this screwdriver, by the way. This is this interchangeable head Lutz screwdriver. I've been carrying these around since I was a teenager. I just really love them. They um, have all these, this is such an aside, but they have all the screw bits on the end that you can attach here. And then I have everything I need. I don't have to have 900 screwdrivers in a bag. So this was just mixed for me yesterday. Um, I'm not gonna give it a mix right now. I am going to take the extra step of putting this mesh filter onto the paint head. I just tied a rubber band around my machine. Oh, it's missing. But basically you just wanna secure this at the end before it goes into the bucket. Maybe I have something here. Oh, I'll take my clip. So you stick the feed tube in there and then you turn it back on in prime mode until all the water clears out of this tube and it's running paint into the waste bin. And then this waste tube, while you're painting, joins the feed tube and clips on to it right here. This. And the only remaining step to prep is to clear the paint sprayer of water. So you're gonna do that just by spraying in the prime position until you have paint coming out of the sprayer as well. We've turned the nozzle from the unclog to the paint sprayer. I'm gonna take it out of prime mode into paint mode and I'm gonna turn the machine on. So the first thing you'll notice is this short burst of motor sound followed by silence. This is because the machine is silent while you're using it with little bursts of sound. I didn't know this the first time I went to use it. I thought that I was doing something wrong or that the machine was broken uh, because there was no sound happening when I went to paint. And um, in fact, this is how it's supposed to sound. And when you go to spray and you are continuously spraying, you'll hear short bursts of motor sound as it restores pressure, but this is operational. And I will just show you the little spray. We're ready to go. This metal cabinet is sort of an industrial cabinet. I don't love this light shade of gray. Um, it just feels very office-y, and I really want it to feel a little more homey. Uh, we've picked a dark, my husband and I, this is gonna be my husband's office. Um, we've picked a dark kind of brownish gray to coordinate with these sagey green walls. I, uh, from experience, have learned that I strongly prefer the traditional safety measures of wearing protective eyewear and a mask. I used to, uh, when spraying, try and cut corners and get away with like a bandana around my nose and mouth. It's, it's not worth it for me. I have had microscopic paint droplets adhere to my contact lenses and it's really uncomfortable and probably dangerous to my eyes, and I've also had a um, dirty cough feeling in my lungs, so I've learned to just wear the respirator and wear the goggles, and um, I recommend it. I prepped the table by lightly sanding it and giving it a wipe down, so this metal surface is ready to take paint, hopefully, but I'm gonna don these adorable accessories and show you how to paint this guy. Oh! Worst case scenario is a drip. It just looks terrible. It's sort of like the liability of using spray to do your painting. So I like to do, keep the gun a little farther off than perhaps some people would because I'm pretty amateur at using a sprayer. Um, I mean, I have a lot of painting experience, so I have a good sense of things, but I think it's a little bit safer to be a bit further back so the spray is not hitting the surface too, with too much force which can cause pooling and then a drip. So I just try and do really sort of light dusting coats, hold it, hold it back a bit as I'm first triggering, and then bring it forward as it's spraying. Um, and it's, gosh, it's efficient. It's so quick to paint this kind of thing. There is prep and there's cleanup, and those are probably where you spend most of the time. But overall, 
I think it gives an effect that you may or may not like, but um, is, is a specific effect that you can't get with a roller or brush. And um, certainly uh, an overall time saver for a big room or even this furniture, um, which I think would be really tricky to get into all the nooks and crannies of. So pretty happy with this. There's one more of them I'll do, and then I will um, install them and show you clean up. Again, I err on the side of casual and not overachiever, <laughs> but I've learned that it makes more work if you don't do it well. So, uh, and I'd like to use this machine again, so I'm going to try my best to clean it thoroughly. Um, so we're basically just going to um, pull, yank these very messy items out of the paint bucket, let them drain a bit. I will unclip this gadget. You can go ahead and unclip the two. Stick that in the waistline. Stick this whole filter in the waste bucket and fish it out later. All right, I'm just gonna get dirty. And then I like to um, give these a good hose down um, before I put this in the water line. So we'll put it there for a second. So I don't know if this is on camera or not, but I'm just gonna give these a quick rinse off. <laughs> To the prime position. Basically, we're gonna rinse this waistline until it runs clear. It's not gonna look totally clear because the water is a little contaminated by this residue, um, but that's pretty clear. The intake line um, has cleared out now. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and do the whole tube that runs to the paint sprayer. Um, it takes quite a while, there's a lot of paint. This is, you know, a long cord. And, um, and I've tried to save the paint that's in the cord. There may be someone who's figured out how to do it. Feel free to look for that video online. I didn't look it up, but I did try. And what happens is when you re remove the cord from the nozzle contraption there isn't anything to force this really thick paint out of the tube even with the just gravity is not enough so um i tried once i won't be trying again i'm just gonna assume i have to waste this amount of paint um moving forward so i'm just gonna turn it back on in prime mode and spray this until it runs relatively clear That took two or three minutes and the waste bucket is full. I'm gonna dump it, fill this back up with really clean water and then do one more cycle through the paint sprayer and then I will show you how to clean the head. You can release this um, handle. There's a little, it just clips in right here. And then this, this part itself, none of these screws need to be altered, but this handle uh, turns. So right there, and then the head just screws right off. So um, this is the filter here, and when you pull it off, it might be stuck in here. So then this filter, you want to give a good scrub. This is, um, this is residue from the enamel paint that we used, I'm pretty sure. And because it dried on for a few hours, I think it, um, 
is just a little bit baked in right there, but it doesn't seem to have affected the sprayer uh, performance. Um, if it does seem like it's not working ideally, I will replace this, it's about $10. And then this itself, you can, in the prime position, um, run water through without the head, which is a great way to make sure your hose is clean. That looks pretty good. And then, now for the fun part. So basically, you know, the paint is coming up through here, so you wanna pay attention to this little zone. And then it's coming out here, of course, and you wanna pay attention to this little zone. I like to just get in there with a brush and get as much of this paint residue off as I can, going back and forth many times, turning, swiveling the head from the unclogged position to the spray position and brushing all around this pivoting cylinder and then trying to degunk this as much, much as possible. And then test it one more time with the prime spray, water through it, make sure it's really still looking clear and that I get a steady stream and then we're all good. Point those up. with the outcome and um, I will admit I did overspray uh, or spray too much paint in this corner and the other corner and then had a couple of other issues if you uh, find you end up with a drip all that's required is there's a helicopter And then as promised, I just wanna let you know about some other troubleshooting that I needed to do. Um, this is one thing that don't be afraid to sand it down and, um, and spray a bit more. Um, the other issue that I had with, with the other cabinet, which I painted outside uh, because it's so heavy and I was having a hard time moving it and also didn't wanna crowd the space and risk spraying too close to a wall and getting the dark gray on the wall. Um, so I, I painted it outside in the blaring sun and it's a metal cabinet so the cabinet was hot and it caused all these tiny bubbles to form on the paint almost immediately after spraying. So similarly, I waited for it to dry which was really quick um, because it was hot and then I gave it a light sand with an orbital sander and then just sprayed over the areas that had bubbled and that cabinet turned out great once I did those things. One other troubleshooting item is if you do decide to throw caution to the wind, as I did, and run enamel-based paint through your project sprayer, the way to clean that, because it's not a water-based paint, is to do a half-half ratio of ammonia to water. So I would suggest at least two gallons of ammonia and two gallons of water so you can get a really full cleanse of your system with the ammonia and then you can run through with water again and then the thing that I did not know at the time how to do or that I should be doing was opening that nozzle and filter section at the spray gun uh, component and so I didn't clean that and that just completely with, with a solid tube of enamel it, it wouldn't spray the next round of paint. So I um, just was able to get that all out and sort of peel the hardened tube of enamel off the filter. Um, so just, you know, if you are going to use enamel, just make sure you clean it really thoroughly and conscientiously if you um, want to keep using your sprayer and it will be much easier to do when it's still wet. Uh, this is a sneak peek of the flooring in this room and I'm going to have a video coming up um, where I've taken all the plastic off the light fixtures and furnished the room. We're furnishing it with all things that we already own, so it's a bit of a hodgepodge, hand-me-down uh, collection of assorted items, but I think, I think we can make it look really sweet. Stay tuned, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.